we have the situation going on at the moment with possible invasion of Ukraine. Um, and indeed the government is saying things such as that we will always defend freedom and we will go to people's aid and defend freedom. But um, for all that bluster, the majority of the country seems really utterly indifferent about it. Well, I think they possibly are, but the, part of the reason for indifference is that there's a profound ignorance of what's going on in Ukraine. I doubt whether most of the politicians who engage in this argument, or many of the journalists who do, could find Odessa on a map. Uh, if you gave them a blank map mm. of, the, of, of the area or a number of, of, of other features of it, people simply don't know. Mm. Uh, but that, that's a very small part of the, of, of the Ukraine uh, yes. controversy. Do you, uh, do you think we are on the verge of World War Three? No. No? Why? I, well, but I don't think that Vladimir Putin is a madman. Uh, if he were stark staring mad, then he would invade Ukraine. In fact, he would probably have done so already. Mm. But in the modern world, the only country which can go around invading other people is the United States. Mm -hmm. Nobody else can do it without United Nations sanction, and, and he wouldn't get away with it. It would probably bring him down. It would quite possibly destroy Russia. Mm -hmm. And you could win without very much difficulty, I would have thought, a, a, a swift war. I mean, even that might go wrong. You can never tell how wars will go until they happen. But having won it, what do you do next? Mm -hmm. You have to hold what you've captured. Uh, Ukrainians don't want to be ruled by Russia. They've made this perfectly plain, and uh, most intelligent Russians realize this. I can't see what would be in it for Putin to launch something as crude as an invasion. Do you know Ukraine? You well, I've been there. Been there yeah. I spent, in fact, some years before all this came, I went on a visit to Sevastopol mm. and to the Donbass, to mm. Donetsk itself, and to a fascinating town called Gorlovka, which is actually twinned with Barnsley. Mm. Uh, and has a cafe Barnsley in the middle of it and to talk to, mainly to Russians living in Ukraine about their problems with doing so because Ukrainian nationalism has been how shall I put it not particularly accommodating mm. uh, to Russians in Ukraine especially recently in terms of language and status and, and I, I foresaw uh, not very difficult to do travel that was the, the last major time I went to Ukraine uh, I, I, when I was living in the Soviet Union, one would go down there uh, to uh, Crimea, which was never really Ukrainian, uh, and to Kiev from time to time. But uh, my most recent sustained trip was a few years before the trouble broke out. And I think I can say that I saw something coming, not this, mm. but something. Because the, the, the Ukraine is a... Is a it's been created out of a former Soviet Republic. Mm -hmm. uh, its borders are completely not ideal for a nation state, uh, not least because they contain, say, quite large Russian minorities. They were, they were not designed for an independent country. And the only way it could work, and I think that, that the sensible intelligent diplomacy which has been going on, this is working towards this, would be if Ukraine became a more federal state and gave Russians, particularly in the Don Basin, more autonomy. I think the Ukraine has lost Crimea for good. I don't think Russia will give it back without a very considerable fight. And I don't think that fight will happen. But I think the, 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 the Russian-speaking East, which used to sustain the party of the regions, which, which basically kept Ukraine in balance before 2014, uh, really does need some special consideration. And if people wanted peace in that area, the, the, the Minsk II agreement, which was intended to achieve something like that, should be pursued. But everyone seems to have let it die. Um, Putin uh, has said that he thinks that the West is obsolete uh, and I wonder you know when you look at the past year Afghanistan and also all the things that are going on internally in the West um, when they do say you know we will defend freedom and we have to act in this situation you sort of can't help feeling but where it do you actually still have the will and the capacity to act, well, even it, if you it, wanted to? In what way is freedom an issue here? I mean, Ukraine is not exactly uh, a law-governed democracy, mm. and technically, I mean, it has elections, mm. uh, but uh, journalists can run into trouble, and newspapers and broadcasters can face restriction. I believe that the books, since Anthony Bieber's book on Stalingrad, I think, ran into trouble over there. Uh, it's... Uh, it, it's seriously corrupt. The former president is currently facing prosecution, uh, having lost the election. 
Uh, it's it, this isn't really an issue of freedom versus tyranny that we're yeah. facing here. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a much much more complicated question, and and what it, and the, the whole zone of Eastern Europe, which is no longer under Soviet domination, has not universally become a paradise of incorruptible freedom, democracy, and the rule of law. In the what now? Uh, 30 years since uh, Soviet rule ended, mm. uh, there are a lot of problems in that part of the world, which are, which really make much more sense to address those than to engage in, in, great, great, in great power confrontations with Russia over who controls Ukraine. And everybody who knows anything about European strategy knows that Ukraine is pivotal. It has been really since the rise of, uh, of Germany. It's and in in modern terms, Spigniew Brzezinski, in his book *The Grand Chessboard*, says that the control of Ukraine is crucial. Mm. Uh, now, it doesn't, control doesn't necessarily mean possession, mm. uh, but it does mean having strong influence over it. And if if if, if Russia felt that uh, that Ukraine had actually passed into the NATO alliance, it would be deeply alarmed. Mm. So you, you, you actually just don't think there is going to, you know, there's not an intention even to invade on the part of Russia? Well, I, I, I don't know. I mean, if, so if there is, then the people who have that intention are, are unhinged. Mm. It, it, it couldn't conceivably do Russia any good. And since Russia controls whether it invades or not, then it, if, it, if, it, if, it, if, if as a nation it does something so unhinged and self-damaging, then it could happen. But if it does, then, then it means that Putin isn't just a sinister tyrant and a, a man who's failed to curb the corruption in his country and certainly failed to establish or maintain a law-governed democracy is also crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think at the moment we have any evidence of that. Mm -hmm. But an invasion of Ukraine would be the evidence. Yeah. But it seems to me to be profoundly unlikely because I see no sign that he is crazy. Do you have many contacts in, with with Russia now? Do you? No, not really. I, mean, I have. I, I, I haven't even been there for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. and I'm, it's, it's the this the the Moscow I knew is unrecognisable compared with the Moscow that is now. So no, but I keep in touch. Mm -hmm. I'm still interested, and I have this vague knowledge of the geography and the history, which enables me to to uh, see a bit beyond the the sillinesses of what a lot of people write. This has been for many years a debate, though, in which it's been a positive disadvantage to know anything about the subject. Mm -hmm. The less you know, the easier it is to pile in. Mm -hmm. Yes. I was just wondering, because um, I just wonder, we, we haven't had very much coverage during the past couple of years of, during this pandemic of certain parts of the world and what, how they've done. And I, I have no sense, really, of, of how Russia has handled, for example, the past two years. Oh, very badly. Very heavy handedly. It, so, yeah, uh, but uh, but it 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 it, it, went, it it was it was it was among the most repressive really? in its initial. Yeah, but then again, it reached the stage where, as I was told by by people I knew who were living in Moscow at the time, where a lot of people, unless they could actually be be seen by a police officer, uh, stopped paying much attention. But the initial the initial shutdown was pretty draconian. They so, didn't they didn't they didn't at all stand out from the rest of Europe in this. They they went down the path of panic.